Hey, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Company, back with another Dokkan Battle video. So, there's been some new developments on the global side as far as the Dragon Ball Heroes situation is concerned, and apparently, according to DBZ Space, as well as the Dokkan Wiki, we're getting all of the Heroes units dropped on us all at the same time, and <laughs> this is definitely news to me, this is definitely very very unexpected um, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around this but of course the reason I'm saying that is because JP actually received these units over the course of I want to say at least a year year and a half and they got at least three to four heroes banners each time getting a few new heroes units and I kind of expected the same thing for global as well but nah apparently Bandai had different plans for us and we're getting all of them at the same time, at least according to DBZ Space and the Dokkan Wiki, both of which are usually pretty accurate, so I do believe it. Um, what I don't know is exactly how they're going to do this. Like, is it going to be just one massive banner where all of them are featured and you just pray that you get the one that you want? Or um, is it going to be smaller, separate banners where, you know, they have the different rounds that JP got and you can choose which banner you want to summon on? Or is there some third option I'm not even thinking of right now. I don't really know what to think guys. This is uh, just so unexpected <laughs> and um, yeah so apparently we're getting all of these guys all at once. We went from zero heroes units to now I don't know the exact number like at least 20 heroes units on global and uh, what I want to do in today's video well first of all before we go any further um, these cards come out on August 12th, 2019 or August 13th, 2019, depending on where you live. For me personally, I believe it's going to be actually the morning of the 13th, but for some other people, it might be the 12th. So uh, what you can actually do is go over to the Dokkan Wiki and look at this uh, release countdown here, and you can know exactly when it'll come out, regardless of where you live in the world. But uh, moving on from that, what I want to do in this video is kind of quickly go over all of these units. Uh, just real quick, I know there's a lot of them, so uh, I don't want to make this video too long, but I want to give you guys a better idea of whether or not these units are worth summoning for yourself. Um, and I'm not going to give you guys a recommendation or anything like that. I personally will be summoning because I think they're really cool, and some of these units are actually very, very good. Um, but what I want to do is just give you guys more information so that you can decide for yourself whether or not you know these units are worth your stones. So... Um, yeah, without further ado guys, let's jump into it, and as far as the order goes, I guess we'll just start from the bottom and work our way up. So we'll start with this battle, uh, this Xeno Vegeta, Battle Beyond Space and Time. So uh, this guy, as well as this Xeno Goku here, both don't have awakenings yet, so keep that in mind, but this Vegeta here is a Vegeta's family lead. Vegeta's family category key plus 3. HP, attack, and defense plus 90%. Super attack is big bang attack, raises defense, and causes supreme damage. And his passive is a helping hand, attack, and defense plus 77%. And Vegeta's family category allies keep plus 2, attack, and defense plus 30%. So he's actually a very, very solid support unit for Vegeta's family. But on top of that, he does get a decent buff himself. And uh, he also benefits from the support, of course. So you can think of him as like a key plus 2, attack, and defense plus 107%. Uh, which is not bad at all considering he does not have a Dokkan Awakening yet, so uh, he's already pretty good right now, and once he gets that Dokkan Awakening, I'm sure he's going to be amazing. So there's the Xeno Vegeta, and here's the Xeno Goku, who is basically Vegeta, but for Goku's family. So his leader skill is Goku's family, key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 90%, um, super attack raises attack and causes supreme damage, and his passive is attack and defense plus 77%, and Goku's family, uh, allies key plus 2, attack and defense plus 30%. So both of these guys are very good support units, and uh, pretty solid um, you know, units just overall in their own right. And... Like I said, their awakenings are going to be pretty damn insane. Now, this third form arms here, which Dokkan awakens from this second form arms, is actually a free-to-play unit. And once again, I'm not sure if his name is actually pronounced arms, but I'm going with it because it makes the most sense to me. And uh, this guy is a free-to-play unit, as well as this Great Saiyan Man 4 here. Both of them are actually free-to-play from the Dragon Ball Heroes world mission story that's coming up and they're both very solid as far as free-to-play units go but I'm not going to go into detail here because I already covered them in my video from yesterday so if you guys want to know what they do go check out my video from yesterday talking about the upcoming free-to-play units on global all right moving on now we have this guy right here I want to say his name 
is Cialis, but someone else also told me that his name is pronounced Cialis, so <laughs> I don't really know what to believe anymore. Either way, though, he's very, very good. Probably top two of all the heroes units we have here. His leader skill is all types, key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 70%. Super attack causes immense damage and greatly lowers defense, and his passive is attack and defense plus 100% when performing a super attack. Artificial life forms category, key plus one, attack plus 20%, and time traverse category. Allies key plus one and attack plus 20% as well, and also fuse when conditions are met. So I believe he's the only hero's unit here that has a transformation or a fusion, and this is what the fusion looks like. So I'm going to actually pop over to the Tokan wiki, and we're going to scroll down a little bit. Oh, by the way, the condition to fuse is starting from the fifth turn of the battle, so it is a little bit difficult to get that going. But once you do, he's an absolute monster, guys. Um, where is the transfer? Oh, it's over here. Okay. So here's his fusion form, creation of a new history, uh, Cialis or Cialis, I don't really know, fused. And his uh, super attack causes immense damage and massively lowers defense. And his passive uh, gives him key plus three and attack and defense plus 60%. Not too good, but check this out. Attack and defense plus 120% when performing a super attack, which is uh, absolutely ridiculous. So he's going to be doing quite a bit of damage and also tanking quite well too. And uh, let's see if there's anything else I need to know. Um, yes, oh, of course. His additional attack and defense plus 120% is calculated separately, resulting in a total boost of attack and defense plus 252%, guys. 252%. Like I said, uh, the fusion is not the easiest to get off, but once it happens, uh, it's over, guys. This guy is going to be mad, mad strong. Um, I've seen him easily do over like 2.5, 3 million damage, no problem, and uh, I think he's really, really good. So, um, like I said, probably top two, uh, possibly the best, but that's up for debate, of course. Um, really, really good unit right there. Uh, same thing for the Great Saiyan Man 3 here. He, his leader skill is super class, key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 80%. Super attack causes immense damage to enemy and raises super class allies attack by 25% for one turn. His passive gives him attack and defense plus 17% and chance of performing a critical hit plus 3% per time traveler's category ally on the team. So obviously you kind of have to set up the team for him. Um, ideally, you'd be running a full-time traveler's category team. And when you do that, he gets a big boost of... Uh, this math is going to be tough. Uh, what is it? 119%, I think. Mental math is a little bit difficult right now. My brain is going too fast. I think it's 119%. I could be wrong. Um, and also, with 7 times 3 for the critical hit, is 21% chance to crit. And also, defense minus 30% within the same turn after receiving attack, which is uh, not great. Wait, is that for himself? Defense minus 30% within the same turn after receiving an attack. All right, so I just looked it up to be completely sure, and he does indeed debuff himself after receiving a normal attack, which kind of sucks, but he more than makes up for that with the final part of his passive, counters with tremendous power upon receiving normal attacks. And if you guys didn't know, counters in this game are absolutely Busted. And the fact that he has counters just increases his damage output by a ridiculous amount. And I still stand by what I say. He is one of the best units in this pool. Of course, he does require some setup. You need to run a primarily time travelers, if not a full time travelers team to get the full benefit from this unit. But under those circumstances, he is absolutely amazing. So there's Great Saiyan Man 3 for you. And moving on now, we're going to talk about who else is here. Uh, let's talk about this kid Bobbity Boo here. And his leader skill is int types, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 80%. Super attack is demon eye, causes supreme damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. And his passive is defense plus 80%, all allies defense, defense plus 40% when HP is 81% or more and recovers 5% HP at the start of each turn and all allies keep plus 3 and attack plus 40% when HP is 80% or less. So obviously he is a support focused unit and he can be a very very good support under the right circumstances if you're below 80% HP. That key plus 3 and attack plus 40% is ridiculously awesome and of course he also heals for 5% but he's not the most consistent and if you're above 81% all you get is 40% defense which is still good but um, I obviously wouldn't run him just for that 40% defense support, right? So 
Um, I'd say he's okay, but obviously there are better, much more consistent supports out there like the Physical Kid Boo or AGL Turles or even <laughs> even Bula for for example. So uh, he's okay, but um, not super consistent as a support unit. Next up is Int Super Saiyan 3 Teen Gohan who has some amazing art. Oh my god. Yo, if for nothing else, the art on some of these cards alone is worth summoning for. All right, so we got in Super Saiyan 3 Gohan here, who also has some amazing Undokan Awakened art. I actually think I like this art better than the TUR, but they're both good, so I'm not complaining. All right, his leader skill is in type key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 80%, super attack, causes supreme damage, and raises attack for 9 turns, which is basically the entire fight these days, and his passive gives him attack and defense plus 100% plus an additional attack and defense plus 60% when performing a super attack. And by the way, just like Cialis or Cialis, his um, buffs are calculated separately, so it's actually more like attack and defense plus 220%, which is insane. So there is the Super Saiyan 3 Gohan, he is definitely primarily a damage dealer, and he does a lot of it. All right. Next up is uh, Toa here, Darkness AGL Toa, who also has some very nice art in a different way. Her leader skill is AGL types, key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 80%. Super attack causes supreme damage and lowers attack. And her passive is extreme class allies, key plus three, attack and defense plus 30% and also extreme allies attack and defense plus 50% and recovers 100% HP when HP is 30% or less once only. So she is a very, very good extreme class uh, support. Obviously not as good as someone like AGL Turles, but um, that 100% heal when you're below 30% HP could also come in very clutch on certain events. And uh, yeah, I like her a lot actually. Very good unit right there. Uh, next up is Super Pycon. Super Pycon. All types keep plus 3. HP, attack, and defense plus 60%. Super attack causes supreme damage and greatly lowers attack. It is passive. It's key plus 3. Attack and defense plus 80%. Launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack when facing only one enemy. And launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack when facing two or more enemies. So, in theory, he actually has a chance to launch up to three supers with some dupe investment and uh, i'd say he's not bad he's definitely one of the less exciting awakenings here but um still a very respectable unit in his own right all right so that's super pycon and now we have super saiyan 3 trunks and super saiyan 3 trunks um let's see what he does leader skill is agl types key plus three hp attack and defense plus 80 percent super attack causes supreme damage and raises defense by 30 percent for nine turns and his passive is attack and defense plus 100 percent disables enemies guard and high chance of guarding against all attacks so um if you want to compare him to the super saiyan 3 gohan uh gohan is more you know damage based more damage output based whereas trunks i feel like it seems like he's definitely more of a tank based. He can still do his damage. He still gets attack plus 100%. He still disables enemies guard, but he's not going to hit as hard as Super Saiyan 3 Gohan. 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 And uh, yeah, Trunks is definitely more of a defense based unit between the two of them. And now we have Baby Janemba. AGL Baby Janemba. Uh, leader skill is AGL types, key plus 3, HP, attack, defense plus 80%, super attack causes supreme damage and massively lowers defense, passive, uh, recovers 10% HP, and attack and defense plus 80% at the start of the turn, and high chance of evading, evading enemies attack, including super attack, which is pretty cool. So a uh, high chance to dodge, which is about 50%, which is really, really good. And he also heals you for 10% every single turn he comes on rotation. Um, attack defense plus 80% is not super good, but I think the fact that he heals and also dodges makes up for that. And um, yeah, he's also another very solid unit. Like a lot of these guys are gonna have the same kind of analysis for just because there's not much more to say than like they're good. They're good, they're not amazing, they're not top tier, but they're very, very usable. Um, and they're also really cool units, man. Like Baby Janemba, come on, Super Saiyan 3 Trunks. Um, yeah, really, really cool designs. And now we have this Black Masked Saiyan Extreme AGL, and he doesn't have an Awakening yet, something to keep in mind. So his leader skill is AGL Extreme AGL types, key plus 3, HP attack defense plus 70%, super attack is immense damage, and lowers attack and defense. Interesting that they gave him immense damage. Hmm. Alright, passive is attack and defense plus 90% when key is 6 or more. 
plus additional attack defense plus 30% when key is 8 or more, and key plus 2 when key is 10 or more. And he does not have an awakening yet. I would assume that he will get an awakening at some point because uh, a lot of the other guys, a lot of the other uh, heroes units have gotten awakenings. So when he does get an awakening, it's going to be interesting to see how good he ends up being because he's already pretty damn good. We got Dark, Dark Masked Dark Mask King. His leader skill is extreme in types, key plus 3, HP attack defense plus 70%, super attack causes immense damage once again, and lowers attack and defense, and his passive is attack and defense plus 80%, plus an additional defense plus 70% for 4 turns after receiving an attack, and recovers 10% of HP dealt, or damage dealt as HP. So let's say he does a million damage, you're getting healed for 100,000 HP, which is actually really, really solid. And uh, he does seem like he's going to be quite tanky after receiving an attack too with that extra 70% defense boost. So yeah, he's good too. He's good too. Very, very solid. And now we're on Demigra Makyoka form, I think. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. But his leader skill is extreme physical types. Key plus 3. HP, attack, and defense plus 70%. Super attack greatly raises attack for one turn and causes supreme damage. And his passive gives him attack plus 120%. Not bad. Extreme class allies, key plus 3. So a little bit of support there. And all enemies, attack, and defense minus 20%, which is, once again, pretty solid. Um, debuffing the enemy, I feel like, is very underrated. So I like that last part a lot. And that is Demigra for you. Now we have Super Mira, Resurgence of Evil. Extreme STR types, key plus 3. HP, attack, and defense plus 70%. Uh, Android Kick greatly raises defense and causes supreme damage. And his passive gives him attack plus 100% and disables enemy's guard. And attacked enemies, attack and defense minus 20% for 2 turns. So he's, he's okay too. He's okay too. And now we have, now we're on a unit that I know a lot of people are very, very excited for because, of course, she's a great support unit. Uh, we have the Supreme Kai of Time. Super tech types, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 70%. Super attack causes supreme damage and seals. Super attack guaranteed sealer right there. And her passive is all allies, key plus 2, attack, and defense plus 20%, and chance of performing a critical hit plus 7% and great chance of additional attack plus 20% for all allies, and great chance of an additional defense plus 20% for all allies. So she has the potential to be a very, very, very good support unit, uh, potentially up to key plus 2 and attack and defense plus 40%, but in addition, she also increases your whole rotations chance of performing a critical hit, which could be clutch in certain situations, and uh, yeah, she's very good. She's a really good support unit, um, not much to say other than that. I'll give you guys a second to enjoy the art once again. Oh, not that. There we go. Enjoy that art for two seconds. One, two. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about Super Saiyan 3 Xeno Vegeta. His leader skill is super physical types, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 70%. Super attack causes immense damage to enemy and greatly lowers defense. And his passive gives him attack and defense plus 80% and disables enemy guard, plus an additional attack plus 50% when performing a super attack. Not bad at all. And for Goku, and I know I'm like kind of blasting through these last ones, but I feel like this video is going very long, so I'm not going to give too much analysis. Um, like I said in the beginning of this video, all these guys are very solid. There's None of them are bad, and some of them are very, very good. So I personally think that it's definitely worth the summon, but, you know, I'm, I'm giving you the information. You decide for yourself, right? Okay, so Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Uh, leader is super STR type to keep plus 3. HP attack defense plus 70% causes immense damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy. And attack defense plus 80% and guard activated against all attacks. Plus an additional attack plus 30% when performing a super attack. And uh, we already covered these guys because they are... Uh, the SSR forms, and we also have, oh, last but not least, the last unit we're covering here, I think I got everyone else, is Tech Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, and he's definitely one of the more underwhelming guys, but that's mainly because he's one of the older guys too, he's one of the oldest awakenings, I believe, for these heroes units, and uh, his leader skill is Tech Types, key plus 2, attack and defense plus 70%, not great, super attack causes supreme damage, and raises attack for 6 turns, and his passive is just attack plus 100% when performing a super attack. That's it, nothing else to see here. And uh, while that's not bad, it's also definitely, you know, kind of underwhelming when you see some of the newer heroes cards, but that's how it goes, right? Older cards are always gonna be outdated at some point, but um, you know, he's still a decent sub, definitely for 
like a super tech team or a fusions team or something like that. So um, yeah, I mean, he's still, you know, good for the collection. Anyways, those are all the heroes cards, guys, that apparently we're all getting at once on global uh, in a couple days. And I, like I said, I personally think that these guys are worth summoning for, but there's also another factor that's um, kind of up in the air right now, which is like, how are they going to structure these summons, right? Like, are we going to just get a massive banner with every single available unit in the hero's pool on it? And they're all featured and we just summon and pray for the one we want. If you want Supreme Kyle time, like you have a 1 in 20 chance or whatever of getting her. Um, or, you know, if you want Super Saiyan 3 Gohan, once again, like the rates are not going to be super good. Or is it going to be something else where there's smaller banners or... I don't know, what whatever Bandai decides to do, but either way guys, the units themselves are good. Some of them are very good. I think Sealess is great. I think uh, Great Saiyan Man 3 is great. I think Super Saiyan 3 Gohan is great. Um, and I, I, I don't even know, like, they're, they're all good. They're all good. Like, Koa is a, one of the better uh, extreme type supports in this game. Um, and so on and so forth. So that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I know it went very long, just like yesterday's video. Maybe it's a trend on, on this channel now that I'm just making like super freaking long videos. Hope you guys are okay with that. And uh, let me know in the comments down below which one of these heroes units we covered in this video are you personally the most excited for? Which one do you wanna summon the most? Do you wanna add to your collection the most? For me personally, man, I gotta go with, um, if I were to make a tier list, I would say like seal is first. Tier list for me personally, of course. Seal is first. Uh, Great Saiyan Man second. Um, probably Gohan third, just because he looks so freaking cool. And uh, I would probably also do Supreme Kai of Time fourth, and Darkness Toa fifth. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, that's my list. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to give me a tier list too. That'd be cool. That's fine. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Hopefully it will help you inform your decision about whether or not to summon. And that's gonna do it. Um, as always, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. That's all I gotta say guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.